Right, welcome back everybody. I think we should call this day three of the KX build. Um, after cleaning the parts, I picked up that there's an issue um, on one of the holders. It broke off. Well, luckily it, it came with the bike at least. Um, and yeah, this I've had this on occasions. Um, it is a bit of a problem, but today we'll, we'll fix this one. So what I'm going to do is I'll be using some copper compound grease, a six millimeter tap, and I am going to tap this right through to the end. It's almost through. I'm going to tap it through, and then we'll take a bolt, uh, a sink bolt on, at the back, and fasten it with Loctite. So, it's always a bit of prep work behind the scenes, but uh, unfortunately it has to be done if you want to do it correctly. I'll just put some new bolts in here as well. Five, seven, one. I think there's six more. So, I think <coughs> I'll quickly get to it, and uh, I'll show you guys when I'm finished with it. Unfortunately, you need to put it on a bench, and uh, only a good source of light is here at the moment. See you in a, in a bit. Right, guys, um, we're back. So, I managed to tap it through completely. Um, well, you might not be able to see. So what I'm going to be doing is done with that. Got a bolt from the back, and I'm going to be putting some Loctite on here. I can't have this bolt being too long for the simple reason that the bolt is now going to be screwing in from the bottom to hold the long piece, to hold this piece, and then I'll be having a bolt from the top that actually holds the uh, springs from the. Um, Plus basket, and I want to avoid using uh, Pratley steel or anything like that. I've always believed in Loctite; always worked for me. So let's give it a go and see what it does. Sorted. And it's not that long. Um, you know what? I can actually go. I can actually go towards the long bolt. Twenty two. Twenty two moles. That is a long bolt. Um, the original ones weren't even that long. So, I can go a bit longer if I want to. But all right, um, for now that one is fastened. Definitely we'll be replacing these bolts. I'm just glad this is all good to go. And I've got clearance here at the back. Cool. I think, let me try and get a slightly longer bolt, then I know it's got a bit more meat on to hold it. Right, be back just now. Right, I've added a slightly longer bolt.
Let's see. <clears throat> 12 moles. That including the spring. Um, hmm. All right, I'll have a look and see if that will work for me. But I, but I know it's, it's tight, so this is not going to go anywhere. I think I'm just going to get a slightly shorter bolt. Right, so, next step. Um, I have been working on the clutch and pressure plates. The clutch plates were dirty. Pressure plates were obviously glazed a bit, so good clean up on them. I'm done with that. Um, yeah, and then let's start with the rest of the assembly. Right, welcome back everybody. Um, I was talking about, on a, in a previous video, about the data that I get from cmsnl.com. Um, in particular, I had two gears. I know they go on the crankshaft, but which way around and what else do you need? Um, so if you have a look here, might be able to see it. It shows your crank layout and then it shows the two gears. So the bigger one is on the inside, smaller one is on the outside and it's got your circle. So let's have a look and install that one quickly and then I'm done with that paper. That is done. Uh, circle pliers. Brown that you'll see is a bit of liquid grease that I put on. Don't worry about that. And uh, please, guys, have the right tools for the job. It makes your life so much easier. Done. Happiness with that one. So this paper now, I'm actually done with. That one can go. The next one here we have as well, we have a layout of the complete casing. Um, quickly have a look. Right, clutch basket. It will show you washers, nut, spacer, bearing, Springs washer in between. Um, this one here goes in the middle here between the basket. And then you line up your clutch plates. And the bolt that I was talking of, the clutch um, pin, this one has no ball bearing. It's just got your bearing. So let me quickly sort that one out um, and have a look and get all the stuff out of the box. I've washed it. And then we'll start the assembly on this one. It'll be fairly quick. See you just now. All right, let's carry on. Crank is built. Uh, we're going to start with the gear selector drum. Um, you'll see there's a little pin in there. There's a pin in there. They need to line up. This bolt already has Loctite on. It's good to go. We'll install the spring and selector. First you do your spring, goes in there, now this is going to be a bit of a mission, so 
Let's do this. And I'm just going to do it. There's a little washer as well. It's got an indentation in, so that goes over that. And the one thing that I haven't got is a bolt, a nut. I'll get that nut just now. now you know what? I think we're just going to get it from another angle. All right, so I've taken the gear selector off for now. And then I've installed first the spring. You'll see it's got a groove in the casing that lines up. Indentation on the back hooks into your spring. Washer with your indentation. Another wash on top. some brine Loctite you can hand tighten this and it obviously works well so I am going to take this chap and bring it back tension it against the casing Line up the two holes, which is in, it's lined up, no problem there. Some things you have to just do in a sequence. If you don't do it in a sequence, you're just going to battle. We'll tighten that one up now. No. There you go. There's your new tool set up as well. Okay. Let's just quickly tighten this. Done. Next lady for a shave. Right. You remember we needed a third clip? Um, went to bearing man, bearing and tool. Asked them for the size on the circlip, they said, nah, just take it. It's not going to cost me anything. Um, I think it's just such a small item. They didn't bother to charge me for it. Okay, let's just make sure that that guy is clipped in. And that is in, Bob's your uncle there. more liquid grease done that one is in um, people if you have the right tools it really is walk in the park is that the way it is yes it is okay not gonna bother with that one right next part we will be doing clutch basket So let's quickly recap. We've got that in. Uh -huh. We need our gear selector shaft. Um, all right, let's quickly have a look. Mm -hmm. 
one spring is <coughs> so the way it comes on you'll see that now when we install it Alright, so, interesting enough, we need to remove it again. I'm just going to quickly pause the video, um, take off the gear selector, the shifter needs to go in first. Be back just now. Alright everybody, um, let me try and zoom in on this a bit. This part slides over your spring in between. That's why I said the paperwork on Siemens SL. If you get something in a box, it's it's well worth just having a look at it and uh, print it out, and and you make use of it. I'm not putting this in time-lapse mode because I want you guys to see what I do. So you can forward a bit where um, I'll do something else instead of uh, working. Okay, but to recap quickly, I had to actually take out uh, the Kickstarter drive gear as well to get the gear selector shaft in so that's why I say sequence of events um, doesn't matter you can take it out put it in again it's not a big hassle I don't build this in a day so I don't care um, still have to do the cylinder but we'll get there Okay, let's quickly reinstall this. And then we'll eventually get to the clutch. So this one now, you have to also pull back on um, the tensioner and you have to push in the gas selector. will be a handy two-man job certainly helps but if you don't have somebody here well then that's it That is done. This is installed. Pops your uncle. Right. Next job. Oh, we're starting to get somewhere. I might regret installing this first. I think I need to do the Kickstarter first. So let me pause this video quickly, remove this, and let's first have a look at the Kickstarter mechanism. Cool. Okay. 
Um, Kickstarter install. On the KX250s, they are actually known to have problems slipping. So it'll, it'll engage and then slip. But irrespective, let's see how this one is. I don't know. We'll obviously see when we find out when we start it. Okay. So at the back, there's a plate around the corner here. Um, let me try and set this up a bit differently. Hold on. All right, we'll bring it back to the different angle, but just for demonstration purposes now. There's a little plate here. And your Kickstarter shaft has a little notch here. So that goes in underneath. And then you'll see your spring go in here. So let's quickly do that. Line it up. So that is in. And we bring the Kickstarter spring back. Done. Right, let's carry on on the other side. Right, Kickstarter shaft has been installed, gear selector shaft installed, gear selector drum installed, crank and whatnot, everything on this side installed bearings. I like the liquid grease, um, but it's just my preference. Use it, don't use it. Okay, let's quickly have a look here. So we have an issue there, this one is on the top here, that's fine. CMNSL, let's quickly have a look. Let's just quickly query the paperwork. Doesn't show it doesn't show the washer. This certainly isn't right. So either way it's not displaying a washer at the bottom. So this is it, this is the way it goes in. But it certainly doesn't like it does not like this. Needs a bit of a washer there. Okay, I'll have to go back to the drawing board quickly and see any additional washers that I have. And uh, We'll get back to you just now. All right, guys, so it gave me a bit of a run around on this one, the spacer. It does not show the spacer is required, but the spacer came in the box. So the problem is when you install it, it actually sits flush on the gear and it just refuses to turn. Um, I'm gonna be using the washer that I got with, it's exactly size fit and it brings it up to elevation so in theory it makes sense um, what i will be doing is to go ahead install the basket it 
just lines up perfectly. So it could be a difference in model, year model that it didn't show. Um, but yeah, either way, it doesn't matter. And then this is starting to make sense to me. All these clearances start to line up. Uh, yeah, I'll get another nut. I don't have another nut for this one, and I'll do Loctite Nana. This is purely for instructional view um, purposes. So this is all assembled on this side. So now we'll carry on and we'll start doing the clutch pack. And then we'll start building the power valve in. I'll show you how, how we do that. Right, carry on just now. All right, added some Loctite. As I said, I'm happy with the spacing. And we'll, we'll get another nut at some stage. But for now, this one has to do. Our little trusted tool. Thank you, handy helper. <laughs> right, we'll be locking that one up now. Um, let's put that away. Okay. So I'm happy with this at the moment. So let's carry on and quickly install clutch plates and pack. Um, what am I doing? Pressure plates had a lot of glazing on. Um, as you saw, I cleaned them properly. The plates, the plates themselves, are still within spec. I measured them with the vernier, had a look at the manual specifications. Happy with that. So it's not new, but obviously they're not worn beyond usage. Now on the IT200, IT490 and IT250 Yamahas, you'll see that this goes in one way only. You can play with it, um, but on the Kawasaki I don't think it is. On the Yamahas it slots in one way. Okay, but this one is all right. So next lady for the shave. Okay, let's quickly have a look at the bearing and the assembly on this side, and then we'll carry on. All right, uh, time to start assembly on the clutch. Um, The one thing I couldn't find is a bearing on the inside, and I know there's a bearing on this side, and it runs true, so it doesn't show up anything on the manual either. So I'm going to be doing the installation on this, and um, I'll have to see what it does in, in, in uh, Practicality. Uh, it should be fine. Just going to quickly have a look at where it's this bolt that I fixed. So I can't put in a too long bolt there. Um, power valve has been installed, it just pushes in. But you'll see when we install the side cover. There's a little arm that pushes in there. 
the end of the day, it's really straightforward on these things. Um, it's just take your time. Take your time, clean it properly. And install it. And that one I'm not going to force too much. We'll see now how long it is or what's go what's cooking there. Hmm. Went through all the way. Alright, that's it. Clutch pack installed. Happiness there. Right, um, I want to quickly concentrate on this one. If you don't want to reopen this, make sure you add your Loctite. It's not going to come loose. It's properly built. The preparation is always key in building an engine. Um, if you do it properly, you're not going to be needing to do it twice. So invest in some Loctite. Right, let's tighten them up. All right, bottom end, sort of almost bolt. Next stop will be our day four video. Um, Caleb is busy stripping the power valve system. Zoop. Hello Caleb. Hello. Okay, so he will be stripping down the power valves for us and then we'll do a proper cleanup. They are really, really dirty. But yeah, you'll have to stick around for the next video. Until later, cheers everybody, Caleb, bye.